Hey everybody, it's Patrick. It is Tuesday, and on Tuesdays I talk about long hair. I'm actually filming this one a little bit late, uh, as you might be able to tell by the quality of the light. I'm trying to get the light to work, but it's funny how when you have no sunlight in the room and you're just using an artificial one, it just looks weird. Anyway, uh, today I'm covering a question that somebody uh, left for me in the comments of either my last video or the one before that. Um, he asked if I could cover uh, how hair dye works, which is interesting because you don't see that covered too much on guys' hair channels. Um, I know a number of guys on uh, hair video channels, on guys' long hair channels who have talked about dyeing their hair. Um, but they don't really talk too much about the process of it. Um, and since getting uh, crazy hair colors, uh, a lot of folks are now, younger kids are going gray um, as a fashion thing, which I think is interesting seeing as how those of uh, those people who are my age are maybe trying to hide the gray uh, that's coming naturally. But uh, I didn't really know too much about hair dye. So I looked that up this week um, and it's it's an interesting process. Um, I did know that dyeing your hair can damage your hair, but I wasn't exactly sure why, because I thought uh, dyeing your hair and bleaching your hair were two different things. I knew if you wanted to go from a very dark color to a very light color that you would uh, use a, uh, a hair bleaching process, um, but I thought that that was different from uh, just adding color to your hair. But, uh, well, let's just go through this. Um, in, uh, in terms of dyeing, there are three ways that you can dye your hair. Uh, the first is temporary color, and temporary color is basically just taking a color and putting it on top of your hair. Um, if you remember from earlier videos, uh, way back when, um, I used a little type of visual aid. I'm going to use something kind of like that again today. I just made this. I feel very clever um, with little tiny uh, page flags. So your hair is made up of a couple of different layers. There's actually three layers. We're only going to talk about two because the very inner layer doesn't get affected by this process or by many processes when you're talking about hair care. So you've got the inner core of your hair, which is called the cortex. And then you have the cuticle, which is a protective barrier around the hair shaft. And the cuticle is made up of all these little feathery um, things. And uh, when the cuticle is smooth, when your hair feels smooth, when you don't have split ends, when it's when it's uh, when it looks shiny and it doesn't look dull, all of those are smoothed down. They're all just keeping themselves down like that. Um, and when you dye your hair with a temporary uh, dye or a non-permanent dye, all you're doing is you're painting this cuticle. You're basically just, it's like taking a paintbrush and painting a wall. It doesn't soak in, um, it just, the, um, the molecules of the dye just live on the top of your hair. And that means that as you wash it out, maybe two or three washes, it's gonna go away. Now, when you are uh, dyeing your hair permanently or semi-permanently, um, you are going to want to get underneath these. Um, when your hair grows originally, your hair is colorless. It looks white. Um, that is everybody's hair starts out colorless and then there's a little mechanism within your hair follicle that adds color. Um, or it doesn't. If you, if you happen to have gray hair or if you happen to have um, albinism, you get no melanin in, in the hair anymore um, or other reasons why you ha might have white hair. Um, but uh, for most folks, they do have um, color that lives on the cortex under the cuticle, so you can see it through there. Um, so uh, with uh, semi-permanent or sometimes called demi-permanent, which are kind of the same process, um, or permanent uh, dyes, you got to get under that cuticle. Um, so what these uh, dyes have are two different things. One is an ammonia. Ammonia basically is a very, very strong um, alkaline. So uh, I, again, in an earlier video, I mentioned that alkaline will open up your hair cuticle, basically for, makes all of these go up like this, all these little things on your, um, all these little feathery bits of your cuticle raise up. Um, now, a little bit of alkaline in a shampoo, let's say, it will open it up, you can clean out uh, whatever dirt, whatever particles are in your hair, and then with a conditioner, it smooths it back down. With a very harsh 
alkaline, like an ammonia, it's going to open these way up. So basically it's leaving the cuticles completely open for whatever. And then you have um, another element, which is peroxide, hydro hydrogen peroxide. Now what this does is the hydrogen peroxide will go in and it will actually burn out the, uh, it'll oxidize the color, the melanin within your hair and uh, combine with the dye in the product, make those dye molecules large so that when these cuticle bits close back down, they can't escape. So you can't wash them back out because the cuticle is holding it in because it's larger than the little bits of the cuticle holding it in. When you dye your hair, I can put this down now. <laughs> when you dye your hair, if you've ever gotten your hair dyed by a professional or if you've done it at home with a, with a semi-permanent or a permanent dye, you might have noticed that you smell this sulfur smell. A lot of people think that that is from the dye itself, but it's not. The sulfur is your hair uh, uh, melanin actually burning away. Um, that's, that's the process. It releases actual sulfur. It's not just a sulfur smell. And that is what's happening to your hair. So when you dye your hair, your hair is actually getting uh, quite damaged. That's why most uh, dyeing procedures then follow with a very deep conditioning. And with your hair in that big open state, it is going to be able to take on a lot of conditioner as well, and then it'll smooth out. Also, when you dye your hair, your hair gets um, a lot lighter because all the melanin's gone. So after a dye job, a lot of people notice that their hair feels a lot smoother shortly after the dye job. It can feel terrific. And in fact, there are some processes called a gloss or a glaze where your hair may feel really great because what they do is they go through the whole process of, of developing um, your hair, uh, of opening it up with the ammonia, developing it with the peroxide. The peroxide is actually called a developer in um, your, uh, your hair dye. Um, and then they don't add any color at all and just close it all back up. And that can actually make your hair feel a lot smoother, a lot lighter for just a short period of time. But um, it doesn't necessarily make your hair in better shape for the long run. So um, if you're thinking of dyeing your hair, that is just something to know because um, while a good professional can work with uh, uh, hair dyes that can work um, a lot more uh, gently nowadays than some of the harsher chemicals of days gone by. It is still a, a very um, a very invasive process for your hair. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you're doing this correctly. Um, another thing to know is that if you have dark hair and if you're going for a very different color, especially one that's lighter or brighter than your hair, you're going to want to work with um, a professional because sometimes that takes what's called a two step process um, or double process I guess um, which is that they are going to have to not only um, do the, the dyeing which is opening it up and burning out that color to replace it but they have to open your hair up once remove as much color as they can wait a bit so that your hair can relax while it still has some color in it and then open it up again to get it to that platinum blonde, total gray, total white in order for that color to look like the color that you're looking for. Um, that's not to dissuade you from uh, coloring your hair. Remember, all hair is dead when it's on your head. Um, as soon as it comes out of the follicle, it is just dead. That's why, that's why you don't bleed when you get your hair cut. That's why it doesn't hurt when you get your hair cut. There's no nerve endings. There's nothing there except just, you know, it's basically like long, thin fingernails if you think about it that way. So it's something for you to play with, and it's definitely something that you can take care of and make look as good as you want. And if having colored hair uh, in a different color than what you were born with or what you have now is what you're looking for, just make sure that you go to a professional and you get, um, you get it done right. Um, so anyway, uh, I hope that covers uh, the question of what actually happens when, you're, uh, when your hair gets dyed. I looked this stuff up on uh, sites like How Stuff Works and a couple of professional 
uh, hairdressing sites. So it's also stuff that you can look into more deeply than say a couple minutes video. Um, I'm here every Tuesday to talk about long hair. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with those updates, uh, you can subscribe. I also do a few other things on this channel. We make a three ingredient recipe on Thursdays and on weekends. I have a friend named George. He's a cat and he talks about being good to yourself. Uh, have a good day. Hope to see you again soon.